A few months ago, Tim Clark went on record saying that he wants Airbus to build an A380neo. Now, this isn't the first time that the Emirates boss has called on Airbus to renew the jet. But now more than ever, it seems like his wish could actually come true. The A380 is undergoing a bit of a renaissance, with airlines rediscovering its value years after it first took flight. And as it turns out, building a Neo would actually be pretty easy. And yet, Airbus leadership has given zero indication that they're interested in the project. But why not? Why won't Airbus build the A380neo, even though the conditions seem absolutely perfect to create one? Let me explain. Before hopping into it, I wanted to thank you all for the tremendous support that you showed on my last video, in which I broke down the winners and losers of the Singapore Air Show. I was actually pretty nervous to go to the show this year, not just because it's really far from home, but also because it's frankly pretty expensive. So in the lead up to release, I was actually really anxious that people might not watch it or that the reception wouldn't be as positive as some of my other videos. Candidly, I've been dealing with these kind of stresses practically every day since I started doing YouTube full time. Now, thankfully, I've discovered several tools that help me kind of cope with this stress and anxiety. And one of those is BetterHelp, which is also today's sponsor. BetterHelp is a leading therapy platform, and it's entirely online, allowing you to tap into their network of over 30,000 licensed therapists directly through your phone or computer. BetterHelp makes sure that you're paired with the right therapist for you from literally day one. All you do is fill out a short questionnaire, and then typically within 48 hours, BetterHelp will match you with a therapist that's well-suited to tackle your specific concerns. And of course, if your therapist just isn't a fit, it's free and easy to switch to a new one. More and more people are using BetterHelp to manage their stress, anxiety, depression, and more. If you're struggling with any of those, you can too. Simply visit betterhelp.com slash explains, and you can get started with 10% off your first month. When you do so, you won't just be supporting me and my work. You'll also be supporting your own mental health. Now, the idea of an A380neo isn't a new one. Airbus first broached the topic in 2014, with its then-CEO saying that a Neo would come one day. And by the following year, Airbus had already kicked off exploratory talks with at least six customers. But over time, those talks stalled out. You see, while new engines would make the A380 more efficient, it wouldn't solve the plane's biggest issue, its excessive capacity. Airlines have long struggled to fill its cavernous interior, and this is a problem because, according to RDC Aviation, the A380 needs to be about 85% full in order to turn a profit. This means that most A380 flights lose money. Now, it is true that an A380neo would help lower the break-even capacity, but without a significant increase in passenger volume, margins would remain slim at best. So, at the end of the day, Airbus abandoned the concept and ultimately shuttered A380 production in 2021. Now, that should have been the end of the road for the A380, but its story has taken a surprising turn. In the last few years, the aviation landscape has gone haywire. Demand for air travel is at an all-time high, all while a pilot shortage has taken hold and the production of new aircraft has slowed. This has led to a capacity-demand mismatch, where total available seats is less than the number of people who want to fly. In this bizarre environment, airlines actually covet the A380's size, making it a hot commodity. Carriers have been pulling them out of deep storage, and their resale price has gone up considerably. It's gotten to a point that several airlines, most notably Emirates, have called on Airbus to re-explore the A380neo. Now, on the surface, it seems like Airbus should heed these calls. After all, they can squeeze a lot more performance out of the airframe for very little money. How is that so? Well, before telling you why, I recently noticed that 80% of the people watching this video still aren't subscribed to the channel. So if you're one of those people, please hit that button and bell so you can see more videos like this in the near future. Thanks. 
Okay, so why would it be so cheap to build an A380neo? Well, as it turns out, the A380's current engines kind of suck. During early program development, Airbus selected the GP7200 and the Trent 900 to power the jet, but they did so begrudgingly. According to John Leahy, Airbus's former CCO, he wanted these engines to deliver a real jump in fuel economy. However, they only offered modest gains. In a recent interview, Leahy revealed that the engine suppliers promised him it would be at least another decade until a major leap in engine performance would occur. Well, a mere four years later, GE and Rolls-Royce announced the Trent 1000 and GENX to power the rival 787. Now, these engines were a huge improvement over the A380s. According to Leahy, they're 10-15% to more efficient, depending on the exact engine variant. And in the blink of an eye, the A380s engines were outdated, all before a single A380 took flight. Now, let's take Mr. Leahy's claims at face value. Let's say the Trent 1000 is, in fact, 10% more efficient than the Trent 900. That means if you swapped a Trent 1000 onto the A380, the plane would see a 10% efficiency gain like that. Of course, this is just a thought experiment. Airbus wouldn't actually pick the Trent 1000 to power the A380neo, since it's now a couple generations old. But the point I'm trying to drive home is that the plane's engines are so underwhelming that, if Airbus chose to upgrade them and changed nothing else about the A380, it could see a 15% efficiency gain at a bare minimum. Now, as a point of comparison, the 777X achieves a similar 15% advantage over first-gen 777s. However, it needs both new engines and new wings to accomplish that feat, which drives up program cost and complexity. For the A380neo to see the same level of improvement with nothing but an engine swap is astounding, and it seems like something Airbus should pursue. Oh, and if Airbus wanted to take things up a notch, they absolutely could. Back in 2017, Airbus proposed the A380+. Plus. It brought forth a set of targeted changes to make the plane more economical. It included things like a tweaked wing, new winglets, and a reconfigured interior. All in all, this would have improved fuel burn by around 4%. Now, the A380 Plus never hit the market, but Airbus has already spent the time and effort to engineer these changes. That means that actually adding them to a Neo would be a breeze, and when taken in conjunction with a new engine, it could lead to a near 20% gain in efficiency. All in all, this is a really good bang for Airbus's buck. In order to realize a 20% fuel burn drop, you normally have to design a completely new aircraft, which can cost tens of billions of dollars. But Airbus could build an A380neo for probably just a few billion. So bringing the jet to market seems like an absolute no-brainer. But now it's time for the million dollar question. Will Airbus actually do it? Well, at this year's Paris Air Show, I sat down with Stan Sparberg, Airbus's head of commercial marketing, and here's what he had to say on the subject. My favorite plane as a passenger is a 380, and we're still very proud of the 380 as our family member. Sure. Now, it is in the past. I don't believe personally that it'll come back. But as I said, the focus of Airbus is to listen to its customers and then make sure that we can address their needs. Yeah. Okay, but why not? Well, Stan went on to elaborate. For me, again, it comes back to the requirements of the market, to requirements of our customers. And today, the important thing for them is to have this balance of risk and, you know, and revenue that they can generate for them. Did you catch that? The operative word here is risk. You see, the A380 is really a one-trick pony. Because it's so big, and because it comes in just one variant, it can really only fly one type of route highly trafficked missions between major hubs. Sure, a NEO would be more efficient, but it wouldn't be any more versatile. And this is a problem when you consider just how topsy-turvy the market has been in recent years. If a global recession hits and demand for travel craters, airlines that bought the NEO would be left with an albatross. 
The A380's inflexibility stands in stark contrast with the A350, which is Airbus's next biggest plane. The 350 can be morphed and adapted to suit all sorts of business models. It can fly high-density hub-to-hub routes, it can fly low-density ultra-long routes, and it can fly practically everything else in between. Now it is true that the A350-1000, the biggest A350 variant, is a fair bit smaller than the A380, but experts suggest that if the appetite for huge planes persists, Airbus could always stretch the A350's fuselage to create a closer one-to-one -one replacement. At the end of the day, the A350 platform can simply fill way more niches and can actually adapt to a changing market. As Stan summarizes, I think the 351 is poised really well to get a lot of the replacement market of the 777s and the 380s. And I believe today with the 351 Southern, 35900 and the 330 Neo, we have an amazing family of wide body aircraft that could address the needs of all the different you know, business models that are out there. But let's pretend for a second that Airbus did in fact want to build a Neo. Even if the appetite was there, several hurdles still remain in their way. For one, where exactly to build it? When Airbus shuttered A380 production back in 2021, it didn't just leave its facilities vacant. Rather, it took its massive hangar space and filled it with an A320 assembly line. Now, being able to scale A320 production is vital to the long-term health of Airbus's commercial business, so there is zero chance that that hangar space would get converted back to building A380s. If Airbus wanted to build an A380neo, it would have to invest in a completely new production facility. Such an endeavor would be pricey, and before you know it, the tantalizingly cheap cost of developing the NEO could dramatically inflate. At the end of the day, this situation shows just how nuanced building a new aircraft can be. You have to take into account more than just cost and technical difficulty. You have to consider the supply chain, your customer needs, and where you think the market is going. In the case of the A380neo, sure, it could be built cheap and easy, but Airbus seems to believe that that won't be enough to guarantee program success, and that its attention and resources ought to be diverted elsewhere. And ultimately, that means they won't be reopening the book on the A380 program. So, what do you guys think? Should Airbus still build an A380neo, or are they smart to prioritize the A350? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Oh, and if you want to learn how Emirates can replace the A380 without having to rely on the NEO, well, you're in luck. I recently made a video that covers this very topic. I'll be sure to leave a link to it right below that like button. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.